Hello everyone, again today we're here at uh, Nonna's house and we've got Sophia helping out. We're going to do the famous uh, pasta forno which is called the, um, uh, the pasta bake. Now we've got the ingredients already set up up here. I'll zoom in very closely in a minute. And we also have uh, some special guests from uh, Giggle and Learn. Uh, thanks Kylie and Leone, they're going to be joining us very soon. You guys, Sophia's very keen to get going as usual, like Nonna. Um, I'm just going to change the angle. So these are some of the ingredients. I did a, a post uh, about five, or about four thirty, and we're just ready to go here. So I'm going to bring. So we're doing the napolitana sauce first, and a little bit of olive oil and uh, some chopped onions, about 30, 40 grams worth of onion. The ingredients for the Napolitana sauce is the same as last week. I'm gonna bring... Get a good decimal. Okay, we're just waiting for a few more people to roll up and we're waiting for Kylie and then we can put you through. Okay, but in the meantime, we'll get going and we'll start. Allora, mo' fine che si ha già aglio, facciamo i polpettini, ingredienti. Now, with the pasta forno, we're gonna do something that mum always used to do um, oh, hello, Kylie. Okay, you're in, so I'll get you in very soon. Okay, Kylie's going to join us very soon. So, yeah, as I was saying, we've got um, the the meatballs here ready to go, uh, and the pasta for not is always, you know, you can do different variants and I'll speak a little bit about it down the track. Um, so there's a different way of doing it, but um, Nonna really loves to, um, so please getting into it, uh, she really loves to put the meatballs. Okay, we're just still waiting for Kylie to join us. It's saying it's adding, just waiting for this to take effect. Um, okay, so this is almost ready now. So we've got the onion, with a little bit of olive oil. Okay, so now we've got the um, the passata sauce. We just so we just give we rinse it a little bit and just to wash it off. A little bit of parsley. Oh, here we go. Thanks, Kylie. Hello, Leone, Kylie. Hi. Hello. Hello. <laughs> we just had to do the Napolitan sauce. Now, the, you guys probably have just, you're one step ahead of us there, which is good. Yes. Um, <laughs> but here now, we've got Sophia. So again, all the, look, the Southern Italian cuisine, it's very simple. And is Nonna here? Hi, Nonna. Hello. <laughs> okay, so we're starting off with uh, with a Napolitana sauce. So that's cooking, and now we're going to move and do the uh, the meatballs, the mini meatballs. Now this meatball here is uh, two thirds beef and one third uh, pork. They smell amazing. They do. Yeah. Ah, thank you. Now we add the salt. Uh, the salt was uh, three grams of salt. The parsley was seven grams of parsley. Uh, the garlic, four grams. 
much. And the Parmesan is uh, 17 grams. Thanks, Marinko. And that's a breadcrumb. So we've got uh, 11 grams of breadcrumbs or 12 grams. Egg. Now, I forgot to put the egg, and uh, someone told me if I'm deliberately forgetting things, so we don't give the the, uh, the recipe. Uh, but no, we don't do that deliberately. Sometimes I do forget. Uh, but yeah, we add the egg. But again, some people don't add eggs. Um, it all depends how you like to make it. Now, just ask a couple of questions. Um, so. You guys are doing the famous, um, you know, it's such a tough job what you guys do with the early learning centres and especially in these lockdown and homeschooling. I think people now, the parents appreciate exactly how hard, you know, your job is. I mean, look, it's I've seen rewarding. it with my Very rewarding. So uh, it's hard, but it's rewarding at the same time. So, I mean, we're all in it. So you guys, we're just trying to give a bit back as well. Yeah, great. And tell me, Kai, what's your favourite part of the job? What do you enjoy the most? You know what? I love more than ever now just seeing the kids. I mean, today one of our little babies brought me up a flower. It, things like that. It's yeah, just things, yeah. Simple things. Yeah. So now, yeah, we're just uh, going back to the cooking. Uh, Nona is just really mixing it in properly. And again, don't be scared to get your hands in there. And just really give it a good mix. Uh, and look, in the childcare centre, there must be something always incidents happening. What, what's been one of the funniest incidents that you've seen or you've experienced? Okay, the funniest thing I've ever seen is a show and tell, um, and one of our little girls brought her mother's underwear <laughs> to show all her friends. <laughs> <laughs> Probably something. I'd say, but yeah, that that's probably stuck out the most. Yeah, right. Oh, that's great. Um, <laughs> yeah, true too. <laughs> now, what I'm saying is, once you get that, then you make them into tiny little uh, balls. You want to make them small because then you can sort of um, put them throughout the whole uh, pasta forno. So, so Fizzy's going to show you real quickly how you make those tiny little ones. So, you just grab a little handful like that. And I know you guys got a tough industry. Like, what do you think it's going to have in the next five years with COVID and other challenges that you may think you're going to be facing? Um, I don't know. Look, at the moment, um, we're lucky. You know, we've got an amazing network of families and the educators here are all. Um, I, I don't know. I try not myself to think too far ahead. It's just sort of taking one day at a time and just having fun and, and yeah, seeing where it leads us. Yeah, right. Very good. Yeah, we can't do this. We're going to still be positive because there's lots of positives that are coming out of this whole pandemic. Yeah, you know? okay. <laughs> We're just still having fun. Yeah. And um, that's right. Fun is so important. And during these times or in general, like what would be one of the best tips that you could give to parents? Um, oh, millions of tips. But I guess just that your kids are only little for a little while and they're adults forever so just um make the most of it make lots of memories ah uh, that's good very nice it is that's important isn't it uh 100 and i'm just curious look i mean i've had the kids now for a little while that we're doing the homeschool um but how do you wind down when you get home from looking after not one or two but lots netflix <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and my partner's a chef, so I'm lucky. So always something nice to eat and um, some good TV. Oh, very good. Well, my wife thought that um, I was going to be a chef, but I'm not a chef. But look, I'm getting an idea now. With these online cooking schools, I'm getting you know more into it, and I enjoy it, to be honest. Uh, yeah, I'm but... more on the barbecue. I enjoy the fish and that, but with soup, I'm really good. But with the rest, I'm getting there. So that's you're very lucky if you've got a chef at home. Wow. I do nothing. It's beautiful. <laughs> no, that's good. 
Well, look, I mean, in the community, I mean, you, you guys are one of the uh, one of the most important, um, you know, establishments that people tend to sort of rely upon. And you know, your work is really grateful and really appreciated. Uh, and without you guys, you know, there'll be a lot of families like doing it extra, extra tough. So on behalf of everyone, and you know, just enjoy what you're doing. And thanks a lot for helping out. Uh, and look, you've got all the stuff there ready to go. So I'll just get back into Nonna because she's giving me again a little kicks in the shin. So I'm about to get going here. All right, and but, thank you um, for doing for the community. It's amazing. No, and likewise. Thank you, Kylie. And you're um, welcome. We'll, and Leone, and we'll we'll catch up soon again. Thank you. Take care. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, so thanks. Uh, that was a lovely chat with those two girls. Okay, none is going back here saying that one egg might be a little bit too much. And um, so you can just, you know, maybe three quarters of an egg or half. Now, to make the pasta, uh, pasta forno, obviously you need the pasta. So now we had that water boiling and we put the fresh pasta uh, for three minutes. Now look, the fresh pasta always works best, but the, um, the pasta in the packets is just as good. So don't, don't stress if you don't have it. And now a little bit of salt. That was written down on the actual, um, on the spec sheet. And on a, like with her experience now, she knows exactly how much to put in without even looking at the scales. So I'm surrounded here by Sophia. She's just making sure the little meatballs get going. The meatball is always good and it's always big for the kids. Yes, Marinko, that's right. You need to the organic Roma pasta. Uh, the flour comes from, um, oh, I can never remember the town, but it's where uh, Miranda Kerr comes from, from that country town. I remember that, but I can't remember the name of the town. So apologies. Now, a little bit of history about the Pasada, uh, the uh, organic, oh, what am I saying? About the, um, the Pasa Forno is that uh, that's been... Mum used to do that when for a special occasion, uh, mainly on Sundays uh, after church or for anything that was major. Now, this was the calling card to get everyone at home. So if we made commitments and we had other arrangements organised, when Nonna used to call in the morning and say, what are you doing? Uh, and we say, we'll get plants as well. I've got the pasta forno ready. Um, we used to drop everything and we didn't want to miss out. So three minutes, I'm just going to jump back into the cooking. Three minutes and that's ready. And we'll just drop it in. And sometimes Nonna was sneaky. She would do the pasta forno when she wanted to say, you know, not necessarily good news, but it was also if we did something that wasn't right. Um, she will still make the pasta bake the pasta forno to get everyone back. So when we got that calling card, we never got really too excited because we didn't know if she was the bearer of good news or bad news. Oh, Ganada. Yes, thank you. That's right, Sarah. So the sauce is ready. But that was the power of this dish. You didn't care if you were going to get into trouble. You know, you just wanted to make sure that went into your belly. So we put a little bit of sauce now just to mix it up, change, put the colour in there. Now I remember mum made this when uh, Vicky introduced Chris to the family. Now Chris was always nervous and he got really, he was very shy, but uh, this was definitely uh, really Made him feel at home really quick.
Yeah, Caroline, you can use other shapes. That's a good question on the pastas. Yeah, you got to just put them on the frying pan, um, Lisa, just the way Sophia was doing it before, and just with a little bit of olive oil. Now, as you can see here, Nonna, she's just really getting into... Now, this is the pepperoni. Now, what Nonna's going to do here, this is very hot. Um, it wasn't supposed to be hot, but it, it turned out to be a little bit hot than normal. She's only put on half of it. That way, the kids can enjoy um, one half without the pepperoni. And for the adults, uh, you know, if you don't mind a little bit of chilli, then that's for them. Yeah, that's true, Marinka. You'd knock a, a date back from Tom Cruise. Uh, well, I'll probably think of, a, of an actress, uh, Marinka, but Tom Cruise is okay. <laughs> now we'll put a bit of parmesan cheese. Now, Nonna also sprang a little thing on me. She likes to throw in a, uh, the provolone. And it's, uh, I'll show you the packet. This is the Italian provolone picante, which means a little bit hot. And you can get them in most uh, delis. So then we'll put a little bit of sauce again. Notice the meatballs already covering most of the, um, the foundation there. And she keeps putting layers. Now she's working very quick, as usual. What's happening, right? Now, instead of the meatballs, you can also put um, eggs. Or you can put some eggplant. Now we're going to put some uh, the mozzarella. Oh, yeah, prosciutto would be okay too, Marinko. That's perfectly fine. Ham, prosciutto, or uh, even bacon. That, that adds nice flavour. And with the pasta forno, what every family does is you don't make enough for lunch, but you make enough for lunch, dinner, and also for breakfast the next day. So when you have to reheat it, it actually, I prefer it, to be honest, um, once it gets reheated. So we put it back in the oven, and when it comes out, it's a little bit that crispy, and I like everything really crisp. So that comes out really nice. Yeah, I have it burnt. That's right. I love it burnt. This only takes about an hour, so it's not really, uh, yeah, it doesn't take that long to make from start to finish. Uh, another good way to do this, or for, to do this, is um, if you're going to go camping or fishing, uh, you cook it and then you can just, you know, take it with you. And you can either reheat it or even eat it cold. Uh, and it's better than eating, you know, a couple of Mars bars or those crunchy chips or, you know, like we were never into that type of junk food. So we brought back with us, we brought with us when we go camping, like proper food, uh, even fishing with some mates. Like, you know, they started to get the idea. So every time I invited my friends to go fishing, uh, you know, they were all in because they knew what was coming. Uh, Lisa, I told uh, Sophia about uh, you. Like, Sophia would definitely, once this COVID is over, we're going to, uh, yeah, one lucky family is going to have Sophia to, um, to have it at their home and she can prepare something special. As you can see, you know, these young guys, they want to get involved. They want to be part of it. She tidied up the kitchen beforehand, make sure everything was all clean, prepared. Caroline, yeah, you want to be my fishing friend too. <laughs> now, just to add a little bit, like from last week, you know, again, and I was having a quick conversation with Susie before, um, this is another fun dish to help to do and prepare when you got friends over to visit. And when you invite people to for lunch, this is a, a fantastic way to, you know, to break up that sort of, you know, anxious moments because it's something to do for everyone. 
And we deliberately invite people to come home early uh, for the visit. That way they can get involved. And, you know, within half an hour, it, it feels like you've known them for years. So they're just filling up now the rest of it. Again, just layer within layer. It's similar to our lasagna, this. And what's important for the... So for half a kilo of pasta, which we have there, is enough that uh, a bottle, which is seven gram, 700 grams of sauce of passata. But this obviously then becomes Napolitana sauce because we had the onion and the basil, the salt. Now the kids, you know, when um, you're doing this sort of thing, it teaches them to have confidence. Uh, they interact with the, the family, friends, the visitors. And at school or at sport, you know, you start to recognize that they actually start interacting a little bit different, more mature. And, you know, it's always nice to, the way we treat our kids is, I don't talk to them like they're, as if they're nine-year-olds, but like 19 year olds And they really respond a lot more positively with that. Yeah, Marinka, this will be available to watch uh, later. Uh, I'll post it and share it on the Facebook um, page. Now, non if you haven't got the lid like that, you can just put aluminium foil. And guys, that's that's as hard as he's going to get. So now we put it in um, in the oven. For Nona's got the oven already running at 200 grams, and we put it in there for 36 minutes. Now we did have a pasta foreign already cooked, but Nick had a really hard day today, and he was a bit upset with me. So when he came, he deliberately grabbed the pasta bake, ate half of it, and took the rest home. So we haven't got a sample to show you because when I got back here, I didn't realize what he did. Uh, so look, after what you've, um, you know, in 36 minutes, you take that out and it's ready to go. So one, you'll start to notice after a while that it's going to start to boil and then you can drop it down to about 150. But it's very important that before you put it in there, make sure that the oven is already at 200 grams, at 200 uh, degrees uh, because that would eliminate um, the pasta from being frail. So it gets nice and crunchy. So I apologize for Nick's uh, behavior. He's always been the black sheep in the family. And he's always been the biggest suki, but anyway, that's done. So we'll just have to move on. But I'll put a photo after when this is ready. Um, so please share the page, share the recipe. And um, look, there's a cheesecake prize. And I think I already have an idea who's going to win this. So uh, <laughs> oh, thanks, Marinka. It's a clean up. Yeah, Nonna spends eight hours on it. Um, I'll pick the winner really soon and then I'll ask for the address and we'll send this beautiful uh, homemade white chocolate cheesecake that Getty has made to your house to enjoy tonight. But thanks everyone for taking part of it. Uh, thanks Susie again for organising a lot of things in the background. Yeah, thanks Lisa. Yeah, we'll definitely do some in-house classes. Uh, we'd love to bring, you know, little ones here that I can share the cooking with Sophia. She would like to have a friend or a partner, and uh, she would like to be part of it and have another one, another offsider next to her. So, look, thank you, and um, we're just gonna wrap it up for now. But that's the pasta forno, enjoy it. Thank you, and we really appreciate all the comments. Thank you, take care, bye bye.